Hello, good day, welcome back. Uh, so this is where we left off the last time. Um, we we're talking about how to do page layout with the div tag. And so, oh, uh, let me save. Look like I didn't save here, so let me save. And um, so what I did uh, from where we left off was simply open up my div thing here and um, created a branch and commit. So I'll just make some changes here and say uh, updated. And so we're going to continue today. And what I said the last time that I wasn't going to delve into the diff thing because we're going to find a better way of, in my opinion, of doing layouts. And um, it allows you to make layouts for large screen, small screen, and so on. So I'll just jump right into it and I'll show you why I didn't want to spend too much time with all the different options that you could do with a diff tag because you're going to use some layout li some libraries that allow you to take care of some CSS libraries that allow you to take with that. And I'm sure you're going to show you two of them. One is called Bootstrap. That's the first one I'm going to show you. And I started use using Bootstrap a few years ago. And then afterward, I started using another one um, called um, Foundation. I'm not going to show you Foundation. Cloud Foundation is very much like Bootstrap. That's slightly different, but uh, thing. And then today I use something else, and I'll show you the something else that I use, and then I'll tell you the end why I use it. No, you are free to use anything you like. I've just shown you one way of doing things. I'm showing you the way I do things, and of course, as you start learning, it's best to you know do things the way you learn it at first until you really understand it, and then you can start seeking alternatives. So I, that's what I did when I started doing single page application, web application. Everybody was following and learning from, they were using Bootstrap and they recommended Bootstrap. So then I started doing Bootstrap. And then after doing Bootstrap for a while, I heard people talk about Foundation. And then I said, to, oh, I understand this well enough to go look at something else. I tried Foundation and I really liked it for a while and so on. So let me just don't harp on that anymore. Okay, so let's create another branch. Uh, so let's, let's, let's create another branch and we're gonna call it Bootstrap, right? So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna click and I'm gonna say new branch. And we're gonna do bootstrap. And this is to do our bootstrap stuff. We're gonna branch off of there. And then, um, so that creates a, a branch. Uh, we are in the bootstrap branch. And then uh, let's, we're not gonna need uh, all this style stuff here because we're gonna be just following along with the bootstrap example and seeing how to do that. So let's do that. Let's open up our page here and let's go to get bootstrap.com uh, I haven't visited this page yet from here okay and you could see you could download it blah blah, blah and all this other stuff and um, I'm not going to do download bootstrap uh, let's click on get it started and um, there's a sample setup some code let me see uh, bootstrap blah 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 uh, so this is if you're using the external, um, if, you use it, if you're not going to install it. So we're going to do it this way. Um, let me just copy this for now. Um, copy this. I thought there was a getting started um, example. Um, let me see if I can find that. Uh, not download the source. The here, not here. Power. Uh, Um, sample page yeah okay so here's a sample page and um, we could certainly copy this and start with this um, the, 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 um, let's do that let's copy this this looks like an HTML page that pretty much like we have already oh that's my phone going off okay um, so okay so this looks very much like the page we have um, already so let me just paste this here and what we have is in the body of our page is this so I'm gonna cut this out and I'm gonna put it in the body of this page and I'm gonna put it below this hello because um, that's the only thing that they have in in their body is hello world and then they included some um, some script the JS query script and then the bootstrap stuff um, and so now I can get rid of this, right? Because um, we don't need that. Um, here, um, the reference to all that bootstrap stuff, right? You know, reference to the bootstrap CSS file for styling and some reference to some Java stuff. Um, 
we can leave the Java, this Java stuff here, um, the bootstrap reference, we're going to go back up to the top here um, because I don't want to download it. So, you know, link to bootstrap um, CSS. So I'm going to copy that um, as it is. And there's some stuff in there that I really didn't need, but I'll copy the whole thing. Uh, like I said, I'll leave the the stuff about Java 8 in there. We don't really need it, but I'll leave it. And then this team is this stuff on the team team is optional, but I'll copy this one. I mean, I could copy. I really can copy both of them and stick them in there. Um, I usually just use the one at the bottom only. And then I'll replace here because this is if you had downloaded Bootstrap, you you'd be referencing this from your local directory, but we didn't do download bootstrap. Then I'm going to select all and I'm going to say beautify. Okay. So that's all we pretty much need to use bootstrap, which is just referencing some external library. The external library being this, the bootstrap itself, which is the source. If you remember, um, remember no, I never showed you guys that, but anyway, source, um, pointing to the bootstrap min JS file. All these other things are just the integrity attributes and so on. It's just so you can verify we download, but you know, cross origin scripting, we haven't talked about that. This other one is for um, uh, team, we, we don't need it. And this guy here is for um, jQuery. A jQuery is a library um, for a JavaScript library that Give you some nice shortcuts for how you look up, look up and find elements on your page. And we have not talked about JavaScript at all, so let's just ignore jQuery. And then there's a CSS, which we haven't talked much about. I mentioned a little bit of CSS in the last time, so let's keep moving before this ends up taking forever. And so um, let's go back here and try and refresh our page and see what it looks like. So here we have hello world and um, nothing much else. Uh, so one of the things you can do is, <clears throat> you see how everything is, but is pushed up to the corner here. With Bootstrap, I can do a div and I can say class and I think container. And so I can say basically I have a container and in that container, I can stick this stuff. So cut, I stick it in the container and I'm going to, select all of it and say beautify it. I'm going to say save. And if I go over here, I don't even have to refresh, but you could see just simply by putting it, everything I had in this class container, now you could see that uh, it put some padding around it, right? Uh, so this container class, this, this remember when we talked about st um, styles, I said that uh, one of the things you can do is with a style is you can create styles for on this div, I can I actually put the style attribute and then put like, you know, background color, for example, and then put a value, blue, for example, like that. Or what I can do instead of, instead of doing that, cut this, I can actually create a style, call it um, my color or my background color or background settings, whatever, or whatever I want. And then I could put that same setting here, except without this, like this. And now if I say I want to use that class, my BG, I get the same effect. Okay. So with the class attribute, you're allowed to use several class name, each one of them providing, you know, some set of attributes override for that element. Um, of course, if I had an ID here, I could say ID main, for example, I could also use that instead and say pong sign main, and that's a setting for, for this. And of course, this class doesn't exist, so it doesn't have any effect. Okay, so what is happening is this container class is defined, you know, in the bootstrap CSS here. And um, if I could, uh, well, let's don't waste time. Okay, so putting it in a container, give me this. But one of the things we want to talk, I want to show you is how to do the layout like we had before, 
we had this heading, we had a footer, and then you know we had some navigation on the side. And so how do you do this in, in Bootstrap? Well, let's see if we could revisit this. In Bootstrap, what you have is the idea of a row, and each row is divided into 12. Um, uh, it's called a grid layout. And so each row is divided into 12 cells, and you can say um, w w how those cells should behave on different size screen. This is not gonna make a lot of sense at first, but trust me, you, you're gonna start playing with it. So each row is 12 cells. Um, and so what you do is you always create a row, and then into the row, you create more divs that says, you know, what size that cell is. So for example, if this, this row for heading would be a row, and there's one div here, and the size of that one nested div is 12. It occupies all 12 of the space thing or the cells. I can also say, well, here's another row, and it has two cells, and um, one cell is, I could say, on large screens or medium screen, this represents three cells, and this represents nine, because it must add up to 12. And then on small screen, maybe I want, as you go on a smaller and smaller screen, this to actually take up more and more. So I could say on small screen, my side navigation is actually, you know, uh, six cells and my content area is six. Or I might decide that oh, on some really small screen, I don't want to show the side navigation or maybe I want it to be on the top or different layouts, right? So let me just kind of show you some of that stuff. So here um, I have a, it, to my container, you know, that's um, padded. So I, I say that's in a container, but then I say div. And I could say class row, so I'm saying I'm creating a row. And then in each row, so the first row is we're going to try to reproduce this setup. I'm going to say div class and column dash medium size. So medium size to size, it's going to be 12, right? And this is going to be my heading. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put it in here. And uh, maybe I want to use H1 for this guy. And so let's see what we have so far. And then here you go, right? And notice how this takes over the entire row there um, width. And then I could say, um, this is one row. I can say I have another row, div class row and notice how this is going to fall below that so bootstrap have all the built-in cascading style sheets and setting to make sure that divs behave properly once you use these class these different class name row or column whatever so in this row what we have we have two um divs really right we have um one for the site navigation and we have one for the content so let's just revisit that so we have in this row we have two one for site nav and one for content and so for our site nav we want class column dash medium on medium size design devices we want that to be like tree for example and then uh, let's see where is our site navigation stuff oh uh, this is all this good stuff here but um you know Let's put this, um, maybe we want to stack these inside of um, an unordered list, maybe. Well, uh, let's, let's leave it for now. Let's, um, uh, I don't know what I want to do with them. Let's just copy them and put them. Okay, so cut, and I'm going to stick this within here, and that's my site navigation. And I'm going to delete this, delete this other one. I don't need this. And then I have this other div here, and this is my main content area. So this way I add a float and all this other stuff. I'm gonna copy all of this, cut it out, and when I copy, paste it in here. And then I'm gonna say class um, column dash MD dash nine. And the reason why I wanna use nine is because these two, this guy, this div, and this div, they're both nested inside of this row. 
and it must add up to to um, 12 okay because remember each row is like 12 and you could subdivide a row so even when I put let's say 3 for this area I could still create more rows within here and each one of those rows would also again be subdivided within 12 cells and I, I could play the same game again of saying that oh you know I want to use 4 and so on so if you wanted to split this evenly for example just put a row in here that is each cell is 6 and 6 and you can keep doing it. You could put multiple rows here uh, if, if that's what you want. Um, so let's say I wanted a heading for this area here called menu. I can, I, can, I can do that. So within here, I can say I have a div class row. And then I can say um, within that, I have a div. And I can say class. Um, column dash md dash 12 for example and the whole thing and then I could say this is my menu so h3 for example menu side menu or something and then I have another row with my div class row div class column um, md-12 and this guy is the one that have all my um, menu items for example so I can cut that and let me select I don't know if I'll get to uh, maybe this uh, this video is just gonna be bootstrap alone I don't know if I'll have time to cover the other one I have to do another video but anyway so I refresh and now you can see this is you know you're not seeing any, I didn't put anything to back it, but you could see how the menu is offset from the content over here, right? So I think it, once you get used to the row column thing, it becomes easy, but you could see it all. We don't have to do all of the silly writing our own class data and style sheet. So we could delete this file, so, right? Because we don't need that. And then the last one I need is for my footer. So... Um, yeah, where's the hello world? We don't need that. And just so you, you know, you you're sure that oh, I am, like, you know, I'm not messing with you. Look at that. So if I select this class, it's that whole area. If I select this one, it's that whole area, right? And notice how it takes up the whole, um, inside of that area, um, the side area, and this guy takes up just there only. Right? That's my content area. And then I'm going to make one more div. And uh, I already have one. So let's see. This is the div for content. I should put um, some comment there. Uh, oh, body. Send um, main area with um, side nav and content. Right? That's what we have. And then in this main area, we have the side nav here. And then um, here is the main area. So content area, sorry. So that's the content area. And this was our site navigation. Right? So this, this, this div is responsible for our site navigation, right? The whole div, right? And then now let's do body. And so we don't have to use this ID anymore because we're using class equals um, row. We want a row. And then we say div class um, column dash medium size that um, 12, for example. And then um, let me cut this and copy this. Cut this over here and put it in here and I'll select again and beautify you and then I say save and so uh, oh mm, refresh okay and so our row is there for footer and what I might want is footer to be center so now I might use you know some ID uh, let me see if there's a class already built in call footer maybe there's 
you know, Bootstrap gives you all these nice things already, a number of things. So let's see, ID equals footer. Does they have, they have something for that already? Okay, no. And so now I can say, I shouldn't have deleted my style sheet just now, but now I can say I have a ID footer and I want things to be text-align to be centered. And um, this text-decorate or emphasis um, transformation, uh, we can say, I think that's text-emphasis. Text um, what are the options? Oh, it doesn't give me the options here. Uh, that's not what I want. I want like to make it bigger, so I could say font that size. Yep, font that size, and I can say um, 1.1 em. Uh, this is just a measurement. Uh, don't worry about the details. Uh, let me see. If I do two. Okay, there we go. All right, so there's a way of scaling things instead of pixel. Em is another way of measuring. So um, now my, my footer is centered and it's a little big and I could say, you know, right? This is my page and so, I, you know, who knows, right? So I, ca I can do different things. Um, and maybe I want to apply a different style for this and I could say span we talked about span tag, how um, let's call this owner, give the ID owner. And I talked about how the span tags can be used to nest things also, but it's not like the div tag. So there's an example of how I might use a span tag. So I want to apply a different style within this area. So I want that to be smaller. So I can say that my Okay, what did I use? ID um, by owner. And I want the uh, uh, font dash size to be, you know, something like that. Let's see, four. Maybe something small. Yeah. Right? And so um, maybe something like that. So now I've adjusted. Um, even though the class itself says, it says override, uh, but uh, let me wrap this up now because we are already into 20 something minutes in this video already. And so, uh, so hopefully you get the idea. So I didn't get to show you some of the fluid stuff. So take for example, so I think you can say container dash fluid and no. This seemed to push it back to the edge a little bit, um, but um, one of the things you're gonna see is notice when um, the uh, the screen gets too narrow, how things flow around because we say for medium size, we want it to have a certain size. But let's put, uh, let's do this. Let's put on our menu something so we can see it, right? Let's say, um, let's do class. Uh, style, sorry, equals to background, uh, no, border, border, um, style, as uh, solid, and um, let's make it, um, what we can actually do, border, um, two pixels, um, solid, uh, solid, um, blue, for example, and let's make um, this area, this guy, let's do class or style, sorry, again, style equal border dash two pixels again, size border. You can see the effect of making it four pixels, just a bigger border, um, dash, and then gray, or red, for example, and um, S-T-Y-L-E, did I get it correct? How come it's not showing up? It's supposed to show up. Okay, and maybe it's dashed. Okay, there we go. All right, save. 
All right, so now I have borders around um, my different uh, thing here. Um, and so when it's on medium size screen, notice what happens. We have, you know, about three. So medium size screens, so all these different size screens, MD represents medium, there's LG for large, and I think uh, there's another one for extra large, and then there's small, SM, and then there's SSM, I guess was really small. So you'll see all this stuff in the documentation for, and I'll show you where to see that. But as you can see, as I start resizing down to smaller screens, as you get below medium, it wraps like that, right? So bootstrap is what's called mobile first. So anyway, we'll look at what, so let's say we got down to this side and we still believe that our, um, we wanted our content to be and menu to take half and half of the screen. So what we can do, uh, excuse me, um, I need to sneeze. So what we can do is say, when you're in a medium size, I want it to be three, but when you're on a small screen, SM, I want you to take six. And of course, if you're on a small screen and you're taking six, then oh, we have to specify what this should be on a small screen. So when you're on a small screen, take six also, because again, it needs to add up to 12. So for small screen, it needs to add up to 12. And there are things you can say like, um, you know, if the screen's a small screen, whether it should hide this one and show the other one. So I could say, on a small screen, make this 12, take up the old thing, and then hide this one. So I could say, SM on small screen, just hide. Ah, there's something small screen. But anyway, let's save that and refresh. And, okay. Um, I, I guess my content, my width here is too much that it's not, um, uh, subdividing the screen. Did I miss something? SM colon that SM that small. Hmm. Anyway, that I expected. Oh, okay, there you go. All right. So you see, notice how it's um when it's medium sized screen, it's this, and then small screen, it's six um, it's half and half. Now, Bootstrap must have have another setting for really small screen. Um, so let's try it out, column that's SSM, or SX I think it is, 6, and it's column that's SX, or extra small, I think it's SX, that's 6, so let's see, oh, there it is, extra small, extra small, and so there we go, and so now I'm saying, um, you know, when you extra small screen, still split it, um, small screen split it, and then medium size screen, Go, do like that okay so that gives you some idea of how you can have um screen that responds to different um, layouts that responds to different type screen and that's why i think it's better to use one of these um, layout libraries like bootstrap um, instead of you trying to do this you can certainly do it because they're doing it with the css and the different attributes you can set on a div except you don't have to learn that you just learn these simple <laughs> classes that you use and you get the benefits so if you go over here to the Get Bootstrap website, and then you go to, uh, I believe, Components, and then you go to, not Components, CSS, and then click on Grid System, you can see exactly what I was telling you. See, I used Container before, and then Container Fluid. So this is Fixed Width, this is Full Width, um, and then the that row to define a row, and then here is an example of within rows, your, you have your colon, extra small, four, or whatever, you can do you know, offset and, and all these things, large. And so these are the different screen size, the meaning of small screen and the meaning of medium size screen and meaning of large screen. Um, and, you know, they tell you, you could overwrite it if you want. Um, and then um, all rows are 12, uh, regardless if you subdivide them, subdivide them, like I showed you. Um, and so here's an example of with the 12 rows, if you want to actually have 12 cells, you would say column like medium, size one, and that just means that on medium size screen, this is how I want to divide, or eight and four, or four, four, and four. And as you can see, it always adds up to to 12, right? And there's an example of the class row, and then all the other um, size, you know, sub um, thing. So it's um, fairly easy, I think. And then here's how you can get layout for different size screen, as you saw we did, which says, on really small screen, I want this to be the full width, on medium size screen, it should be eight here. And um, on really small screen, there should be six, and then it should be um, four. And so you could see when you resize it this way, the result you get 
is just that. This takes over the full screen, 12. This is only half the screen. Um, but then if I push it back out, you're gonna see that it goes back to where, um, and then here, small screen, this is nine, blah, blah, blah. And so you could get the, you get an idea. And these are the ones where you can do offset, offset, so you can have um, missing pieces right here. You said this is four, but you want this to be four, but you don't want it to be in the middle, so it's offset by four. So because it's offset by four, it still had up to that 12. And you could see, even when you use offset, it still have to, mats still have to add up to 12. But you can definitely come and look at the documentation here. I think I made the point that oh, this is probably easier to use then. It looks a little confusing, just come and play with it. I, if you just try it for a little bit, even if you do what we've done, I think you're gonna get the idea. And you'll have to learn all the other complex stuff. Now there are tons of other goodies in here that we're probably gonna get to later, another time, but that's all I want to show is how you can do layouts um, easily, much more easily in my opinion. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video where I'll show you yet another way of doing layout the way that I use currently. And then I'll tell you why, but you're free to use it your own way. All right, I'm going to basically set it how I'm saving this and commit and work on um, library framework, whatever you want to call it. And that's that. And I'll close here and then uh, see you in the next video. Bye.